love it, you know? I got nervous there when you said controversial, but that is probably the least controversial thing that's been said on, oh. on this show. So. Yeah, I, I completely Sorry, agreed me, with me. every single word of that. So that, that wasn't controversial so, to me. Let me make it a little bit more controversial. Okay. okay to, my okay. Young, to my young leftist liberals that I love with all of my heart and joy, I am here for you through all of your tears. And when you're done crying, let's get some shit done, okay? So here, is that a little I, I bit? Have, I feel like that's still <laughs> I think we have different definitions of uh, what controversial means. Oh, yeah. Well, damn it. I tried. I tried. Uh, uh, Sargon, do you want to um, take a second to kind of wrap up your... Uh, yeah. No, you can, you can just listen to what Brittany said again. That was perfect. I completely agree with her. <laughs> oh, That's probably, this is probably like the the uh, one of the the best talks that we've had on here. I mean, it, like we didn't have to inter- interject one time. Usually, it's us trying to fight between the two people that are talking to every other. That was that's how it's done right there. That was excellent. Okay, Steve. I, had, I told you. Uh, I told you. You, <laughs> you did. You did. <laughs> you did. Um, so, 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 Steve, do you have? Collect some questions. We do, we, from the live chat. we do have some questions from the live chat. Um, let me just interject one quick thing, if I may first, um, and see if you guys both agree, because this was kind of contentious in the live chat, um, and this is my belief as well. Uh, we can argue that there are inherent rights that are natural rights, inherent by being the fact by virtue we are human, that without invoking a God, and that human rights inherently, by definition, are something that are are not bestowed by, by, to us by the government. If the government gives you, quote, inherent rights, they're not rights at that point, they're privileges. Would you guys think that makes sense? Well, I, I think that the important thing from liberal theory, at least, is to uh, understand that the government's purpose is to protect your rights. And your yes. rights are inherent to you. And, the legitimate, and th- this is why we don't find non-democracies legitimate governments. This is, why, this is why people are freaking out that Trump's being pally with Kim Jong-un, because we don't consider dictatorship a legitimate form of government. But Sorry, I'm getting a bit of echo back on some reason. But, um, but yeah, yeah, so, I mean, I'm, I'm that, that's, that's the legitimate function of government in liberal theory. And ultimately, we all tacitly ad- agree with that. So, I mean, like most people do anyway. And that's how liberal democracies continue to function. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Okay. okay. Uh, so some of the questions were, I'm going to start with one, Brittany. Um, and these are kind of two questions I'm going to combine to one because they're very similar. Um, for Brittany, at what point do we stop applying systematic intersectionality in an effort to keep it from spawning systemic individuality? And then the follow-up would have been, can you see how intersectionality will eventually lead to individualism? Yeah, I, I, I do. I think that any any um, thought process that gets introduced to white society needs to be, it needs to be understood that that means that people, person, whoever created it, to saw a need for it and they created it because of that need. So once the need is met, I don't think philosophies usually need to stay longer than they're needed. So if they're an active thing like intersectionality, intersectionality is just the acknowledgement that this is how the system works, but the, sorry, my alarm how obnoxious, but the idea is eventually we'll get to a point where we don't, we can look back and say, ah, yes, the times when intersectionality was needed, fun, good times now over. That's the goal. And I think that takes time and generational gaps. And I think it takes having many, many children who learn to not judge a book by its cover. And it's a lot of like the 90s, what they attempted in the 90s, but couldn't actually make it real or implement. But I, I do think that people should exist in their really unique and individualistic ways and intersectionality, acknowledging that theory as a reflection of the time it was created and why it was created, I think is a positive. Does that answer your so question? Maybe I might have a backwards thing because I thought intersectionality was trying to produce more of a collective um, and, and try to weigh the pros and cons of who is being more oppressed, who is being least oppressed, based upon certain properties of an individual, race, class, creed, those kinds of things. Sure. Well, if, but if you got to an I, well, if you got into a no, that's that's how it starts off, and you need to acknowledge. So we need to acknowledge that that's the case. But eventually, if people come to uh, an understanding, at least in the U.S., because I, I don't really know how to use the metric with other countries, but in the U.S., there will come a time when everyone should be existing in a more harmonious and peaceful state of you do you boo. Like a legit, you do you boo. As a, you know, I think we can really get there. I just think it's going to be a little bit more complicated. But I do think intersectionality is a great way to start. It's not perfect, but it's a pretty darn great way to start. Can I can I uh, address something? Yeah, um, sure. that can that can never happen because intersectionality is 
pathologically obsessed with inequality. And if people are left alone to do their own thing, then you'll get nothing but inequality. And the whole, the whole thrust of intersectionality is to eliminate these inequalities. And they're very, very forthright about that. So the, the idea that we can ever achieve anything approaching you do you uh, through intersectionality is, is preposterous to me. Well, I will say, and I will concede on one point that I do think there are people who say they're intersectional, intersectionality um, feminists, but intersectional, but they'll say things like um, intersectionality is anti-capitalism, but that's not really true. Is it like the, the foundation of, Kim- well, but Kimberly's thoughts were never that everything I've learned from her so far isn't rooted mm-hmm. in capitalism being destroyed. It's rooted in capitalism being acknowledged as not the most fair system, which it is not. It is not it not to say that we fair system. You you couldn't imagine a fair one. Um, you know, I accept it for what it is. I'm not. I don't really worry about changing it too much. I can exist within its confines, but I don't think it's the. I don't think it's like the greatest, most ethical I'm system. Not, I'm not saying that there aren't unfairnesses within capitalism. But it's just sure. as a system. It's it's the it's like democracy. It's like democracy. It's it's the the, the worst system, but the better. The, the it's a bad sure. system, but the best of the rules we've discovered so far. And the, so we do agree problem. on that. So I I well, agree well, if I'm that not, is I'm your. Not saying that there aren't flaws, but I am saying it's the best one we have. You know, sure, I'm so okay with it's that. The most fair one we have. Yeah, okay. But but, uh, but yeah, but in, in not, sexuality necessarily has to be against capitalism because capitalism produces inequality. There's no choice. I, 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 like, I don't know any intersectionality. Is not intersectionality predicated on inequality? I mean, isn't that the whole reason why there's an intersectionality movement? Because of oh, yeah, it's, it's yes, to it's eliminate a, inequality. Yeah, it's right. a, well, I, I would argue right. that it's to acknowledge inequality, and then as a way of figuring out now how to implement it in a way that would help mitigate you know, unfairness. But I really do think the core of intersectionality from my understanding, and I, again, she's coming out with a book in 2019, but from her talks, cause I don't trust the people who take people and twist their philosophies to match their own, their own ideas. So I'm taking it strictly from Kimberly. It's an acknowledgement of the disparity. And then hopefully by acknowledging it, like AA, you have to admit you have a problem before you start. We can then fulfill steps to make sure that that's not happening so much. But we need to do it by bringing minorities up and everyone up with them, in my okay, opinion. So, okay, so um, I, I don't agree that inequality and unfairness are synonyms. Um, you used them as synonyms okay. just now. Um, it's, it's not unfair that someone's not the same as me. But it, in the same regard, it's not right. unfair that I'm I'm not as attractive as you. You know, it's it it's not wow. something that can be countered. It can, it's not something that it doesn't give you a moral license to start taking over society in order to try and erase the inequalities because you're necessarily going to have to start oppressing people to do that. Because if you want to erase all the inequalities, what you have to do is reduce everyone to the position of zero. You've got to remove anything sure. that anyone's ever worked for. And so, right. you know, I, I don't want bad? to have to make you as ugly as me. Uh, that would be a terrible thing. But that was, that's the only way we're going to become equal in regards to that, isn't it? So right. no. inequality isn't so, necessarily a bad thing. We So again, my, my personal philosophy as a Brittany is not that we should strive to live in a world without unfairness or we should try, strive to all be the same in terms of our val- like in terms of physical or, or, or money value, but instead that we should strive to live in a country that represents those who are saying, hey, I don't think I'm getting the things I want out of life. Can, in what ways can I have those things like uh, accessibility to jobs or accessibility to, you know, uh, opportunity disabled is a great example. Everyone in intersectionality loves disabled people right now, as do I, as do, as do people, but sidewalks are a perfect weird example. Like there are things that everyday non-disabled physical people might not think about, but people with disabilities who have to worry about wheelchairs over curbs are fighting for representation through law. So that's just examples of ways that intersectionality is, I I think, positively talking about affecting society. And by doing this, we're not making the person who can't walk, walk all of a sudden, but we're allowing them the same uh, chance to get across that sidewalk in at least somewhat of an easier way. Does that help a little bit? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, in my country, like, you know, through the 80s and 90s, we had um, legislation put in place where, you know, uh, buildings have to have disabled access and things like this. You know, the, the, at the edge of each curb is um, is a, a slope downwards so that people with wheelchairs can get up it. But, yeah, I know, but I it didn't require intersectionality. 
Well, I hope we can get to that place because we're not there yet. There are many places. I, 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 that- I, I agree. That's something you can lobby for as well. Um, but that didn't yeah. require intersectionality. You know, it didn't. It doesn't require um, oh, a prescriptive, yeah. tyrannical movement, social movement to do that. I mean, you can do that operating from a liberal point of view, which I think is a way more productive way of doing things because you don't alienate people when you're doing that. I think this is a beautiful moment, everybody, because I must say something that, again, I consider pretty controversial. I do not think you need to be intersectional or feminist. I do not think to move society forward. I don't think your labels matter. Your actions do. But that means that in order to make it clear to other people what you're trying to do and to bring groups together, sometimes labels help coax people in or sometimes in this case, I might reject them out. So I do. I think we might agree more in that front. I don't. I don't mean, and I'm so sorry if that was the impression when I was asked to come on this show that I would say you have to do intersectional or you're out, but that is not, no, that's we, not my belief. No, I just no, think no, we just wanted a, a, a conversation between you two. It wasn't, uh, right. you know, we weren't looking for any kind of um, fireworks. Yeah, I'm, like I'm sorry. Cool. I'm sorry if you thought that I meant that you must have an opinion. Obviously, I don't think you must have any opinions, but there, there are lots of people who say that they're intersectional feminists or you know, just intersectional activists who do hold that kind of opinion. And so when, and that seems yes. to be the stock opinion for intersectionality. I mean, like, like I wouldn't define you as an intersectional feminist. You, you seem to disagree with a lot of the things they say, but kind of hang on to a couple of their beliefs for some reason. And yes. I, I, I think that you're better than that. You know, I, you, you seem way better than them. They seem like horrible people. You seem like a lovely well, person. So, I am a lovely person. That's for sure true. And some people are awful people, but I I don't think that when movements get created, I think the origin is always the most pure. So I think intersectionality at its origin was pure. I think what it is now is not what Kimberly had intention had intended. And I do think that I am trying to sit here as a feminist and say, Hey, like feminists, we need to be a little bit more objective truth and more, a little bit more logical when we're implementing these, these um, advocacy wants. And that's all I'm personally trying to do as a YouTuber and content creator is just to say that if we can see other people's, like if you want people to see your story, you have to see their story. And then we need to come to a compromise. Um, and that's, that's sort of my whole belief system on my channel. That's why I have so many people who are different Republican and libertarian and stuff. I have a lot of MAGA people. Um, and I'm, I'm all about it. Please come hang out with me. Like come show with me. We have these great discussions. Let's do it at MythCon. But this is, this is exactly by the way, how I thought the conversation would go. I thought it would be super chill. I was surprised. Like we even needed a moderator, but I was like, nah, Carl's going to be chill. I'm going to be chill. It's going to be fine. You didn't. Also, I none of us are moderators. Yeah, no, none of us are moderators here. We're just hosting. We're just watching part of the conversation, but we're not. Oh, we're just watching this. There's no need to. You guys were fabulous. You guys were doing great. Um, yeah, Steve was. Was that it? Uh, there's a, a couple more questions. questions. Um, yeah, and by the way, when you, um, and somebody was talking about this earlier, and it's like a good time to bring it up. You you're talking about feminism? Isn't the same thing to be applied to second wave feminism, like egalitarianism? How it's now been promoted and changed and moved to, to this third and fourth wave feminists and people like myself, I don't identify for the feminist movement because of that. I don't like the radicalization that has happened. However, people will assume that that means you're not egalitarian or you don't accept second wave, which I find to be kind of strange. I don't see the correlation there. How, how do you address something like that when people say, well, I'm not a feminist because I don't like the way the feminist movement is going now, but of course I'm egalitarian. Do, do you think that they have to accept that label or or not? No, absolutely. I have so many women friends or man friends or non-binary friends that are not feminists that reject that label and they are just as valid and important in the fight for um, uh, of a better life and a freer life and I and I promote them in those things. I I love feminism because it taught me so much, but I also acknowledge there's like 12 different philosophies of feminism and, and as a woman I even support TERF's right to exist as feminists. I don't think you're less of a feminist if you're trans exclusive. I just think you are a different form of feminist and I think it's a valid form of feminism as any form of feminism i just think we have different wants out of existence and that's why these labels come in handy it's just to say hey are you part of my group or not a part of my group i personally say feminist as a whole and i don't specify generational feminist because i don't i can i understand why every single part of feminism came about it's very makes sense it's very logical there was a thing that happened this created it cool that makes total sense to my brain 
Um, but as a feminist, you do not like what's her Amy Schumer, who I think is the most deplorable human I've ever seen in media worse than Trump. And she said, uh, if you're not a feminist, you're against women. And I just looked at her and I was like, "Mm." I bought that for like 30 seconds. And then I realized it makes no freaking sense. And it doesn't make sense. And it's fine that it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make feminism inherently wrong. It doesn't make anything wrong. It just doesn't make sense as a statement. It is not factually true and is not helpful. 